Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to discuss thirds. Now thirds is usually a root sign but the number inside is not a perfect square like 22 for example. If I do the root of 25 you would get a round number like 5. If you do the root of 144 you would get 12. But when you do a number that doesn't have a perfect square, that doesn't give you an integer as an answer, then we refer to this as thirds. Thirds can also be written in an exponential form. Now the rule for thirds to be written in an exponential form is the base is a and the power becomes x over y which is inside over outside. Now, with certs, there are certain rules that apply. And if you apply these rules, it would make your work easier. Let's take the following example. If you have a root that is multiplying each other, but they have the same root sign. In other words, they both square root or they both cube root or they both root to the power 4. Then the rule says that you can multiply the numbers inside. Let's do the following example. Now you know there is no cube root of 9. Neither is there a cube root of 3 that would be a perfect integer that would give me a very nice round number like 3 or 5 or 7. If you press this in the calculator, you're going to end up with funny numbers with decimals, non-terminating decimals. In other words, the decimal, the decimal will go on and you won't be able to solve it. Now, let us apply the rule. Because they are both cube roots, we know that this is also going to be a cube root. What we're going to say is 9 times 3. 9 times 3 is 27. Now the cube root of 27 is 3. You could use a calculator and give me the answer 3. But in the exam, they would say, solve the following without the use of a calculator. Now when you start using a calculator, they immediately see that you have used a calculator because you skip all these steps. Right. Let us do the second rule. The second rule says, if you have the root of A over the root of B, provided they are the same roots, so both of them would be square roots or both of them would be cube roots, then you can put it under one fraction. Remember the emphasis is that the roots must be the same. You can't have a 5 outside of one and a 3 outside another one and join it. They have to be the same. So if we've got the following question. The root, square root of 125 over the square root of 5. Now you know the square root of 125 is not something you can simply solve without a calculator. But if I put it under one fraction, then I would have had the square root of 125 divided by 5, which is the square root of 25, which gives us a perfect 5. Again, without the use of a calculator. There's two rules that you've learned. The multiplication rule and the division rule. Now, let's take the next example. When they give you sums, sometimes the question doesn't have a multiplication, neither does it have a division. But they will say, solve the following without a calculator. You can simply type this into the calculator. You'll get a very nice answer. But because you don't have the steps in between, they'll immediately pick it up and you will be penalized. Now, the square root of 18, we don't have that. So what we're doing is we use the fishbone method. This method is taught in grade 9. If you're not familiar with it, you have to go back and refer to those videos. So, for root of 18, we have 3 root of 2 minus. Now, we're going to do the fishbone for 8 
and we're going to do the fishbone for 50. Now we're going to do the fishbone for 50. Now let's get the answer for root of 8. So we have a double 2 there. So we have minus 2 root of 2. And for root of 50, we have a double 5. So it would be plus 5 root of 2. What you should notice is that all of them have root of 2. So it's like adding 3 apples minus 2 apples plus 5 apples. Or what you could say is or what you could say is 3x minus 2x plus 5x, which will give us 6x. So our final answer is 6 root of 2. Now for examination purpose, you do not need to show this part. So had you pressed in your calculator, since we have the new calculators, the Casio's, FX82s, you even got a Sony that's a newer version. If you had pressed in a third, your calculator immediately gives you this adjusted form. So you could just press in root of 8 and get 2 root of 2. You could press in root of 50 and you get 5 root of 2. As long as you show each form, each expression on its own, you will get the mark. But if you intend going to university, then it is relevant that you know how to do this without a calculator. Okay, let us do further examples. What the examiners had realized is that a lot of children are using their calculators without really calculating the answers. So they start giving you questions that you cannot use a calculator. Let's do the following example. If I give you The square root of 64, x to the power 16, y to the power of 8. Now you can't press x to the power 16 in your calculator. Neither can you press y to the power of 8. So you need to know that we would do the square root for every term. Just like the rule where if they are together, we can separate them, but likewise, if they separated, we can join them. So you must be able to work the rules back and forth. So we have 64, x to the power 16, y to the power 8. Now 64 is easy, you should know this, it's 8. x to the power 16 the rule is inside over outside. Why? The rule is inside over outside. So we have 8 over 2, giving us a final answer of 8, x to the power of 8, y to the power of 4. All right, let us do a division. Now again, you would notice that these are not perfect squares. So you'd have to get the answer of root of 75. You can use the kitty cat method or if you press into your calculator the root of 75 then you would have had 5 root of 3 plus root of 3 cannot be simplified and 27 is 3 root of 3 now we can't cancel because there's two terms on top and one term at the bottom but what is 5 apples plus 1 apple it's 6 apples so it's 6 root of 3 over 3 root of 3. Remember, once they are in their simplest form, see the root sign as an unknown. Like 5k plus k is 6k. Once we've joined it, we can now cancel the roots. We have 6 over 2, which is equal to 2. Thank you for watching.